have come here to chew bubble gum and kick ass. And I'm all out of bubble gum. Go ahead. Make my day. Cinema Royale. Hello, welcome back to Cinema Royale. Yes, we are back after a month hiatus. We needed to because we've been doing the podcast for two years straight. God damn it, stupid phone. Today, Matt will be played by an omnipresent voice and a leather chair. Let me get... Let me get on with that. Um, so, yes, this is episode 48. We're recording on March 8th, 2015. And yes, 24 episodes ago, exactly, we did our first annual Oscars episode with... It was Matt and I, and now we have additional two other members that will be willing to talk about this year's Oscars. Let me introduce to you to my awesome film officiados. Uh, let's go from, from my point of view, right to left. So first off, we got Jada Jada. Hello. Today, for those who don't know, is International Women's Day, which means I am here to make sure that feminism is somehow shoehorned into this debate at some point. For oh, topicalness. Aw, oh, hell no. The man in the middle is always James Sullivan, also known as Jaime, dude. Tonight's broadcast is brought to you by I've been wearing the same clothes here two days straight. And sleeping in them, too. Well, Wait why up. not? You live in bed. Obviously. From the perspective of our audience. Yeah, they yeah. See. yeah, they see That's that. That's true. And, and last, but not least, the man oh, to the left is Matt, also known as Animat. Uh, gum? Rice Krispie Square. Was that your I reason want... for being a voice this whole time? Yeah, I wanted to recreate the opening of, uh, well, the, like, the opening Looney of, like, the I Warner Brothers it. logo. I, I, I got the Looney Tunes. It occurred to me. <laughs> anyway. It was subtle, but I got it. It's just, I, hold, I held this Rice Krispie, and I was like, I idea. have an idea. I got an idea. <laughs> Gotta do it. So, second annual Oscars 2015 reaction episode is a commencing mode now. We're gonna talk about the ceremony, we're gonna talk about the presenters, the host, the awards, and all that good stuff. But before we go on to it, Animat has already done a video about this. He talked about the animated portion of it. He also did a bonus on the Annie Awards. You can there's a link below if you want to check it out, or you can click on a space. Yep. <laughs> um, basically, this uh, in this podcast, I will be repeat, repeating uh, what I have said before on um, on that video. But like, I'll probably add in some new tidbits. But for the most part, uh, for those of you who have seen that video, um, there will be some things I will say that will sound familiar. I, yes. for my part, will be focusing mostly on the host and the presenters of things. Because right. I actually know quite a bit about Neil Patrick Harris's hosting record. And have comparative things to say and such. That's good, uh, that's good, that's good. Ah, I see you are a Tony's watcher. Oh yes, a big Broadway fan, I think I've established that. Yes, we have established that before in previous episodes. Oh, I have words. I have such so, words. So yes, if you have not seen the Animats video... Check it out. Actually, you can check it out right now. Pause the podcast right now. It's 28 minutes long. It's not that bad. Come back and continue. Whatever you want to do. So, all right. So, this year, we have Neil Patrick Harris hosting the Oscars, which he's been known to host other stuff, as Jada said before. So, what do, you, what, what do we think of Neil Patrick Harris as a host? Well, Neil Patrick Harris has hosted the Tony Awards four times. And he's hosted the Emmys twice. And of those four Tony performances, I've seen three of them. The Emmys I don't watch, so I've seen mostly snippets 
but it looks like pretty much the same level of quality that the Tonys had, which he's won Emmys for his hosting performances. He's been acclaimed. He's considered one of the big hosts currently doing hosting jobs, you know? Like, if, if, if Billy Crystal was still relevant and not, like, some old guy who makes dated jokes. And I'll get back to that in a minute. Or maybe more than a minute. But the point is, I'm familiar with Neil Patrick Harris as a host. He's one of the best hosts out there. He can sing, he can dance, he's he's charismatic, he can connect to the audience, he's funny, he, he has high energy. High energy. I want to emphasize that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so... Speaking as someone who has seen all these things and knows all these things, I can safely say, I have no idea what the fuck happened. I really don't. I'm so confused. I can only attribute it to the the fact that the Oscars really is literally soul-sucking. That's the only conclusion I can come to. Like, if, if if Anne Hathaway and Billy Crystal and Seth MacFarlane do crappy jobs as Oscar hosts, I can let that slide, because they're capable of being crappy to begin with, so it's not all that surprising. But if you can't make Neil Patrick Harris into an entertaining presence on your award show, you yourself are the common denominator, officially. And you mm-hmm. have some issues to work out with your writing staff. Some issues. Mm-hmm. Some we can't get over 2005 issues oh lord can't get over 2005 okay. what happened in 2005 <laughs> bitches be tripping who the hell says bitches be tripping anymore people who? in 2005 i guess i want to know <laughs> wow neil patrick harris did not want to be there my god he's usually so happy to be a part of it he's like tweeting he, he's making jokes all the way. He's showing up a lot. He has high energy because he's happy to be there. He did not seem comfortable at all with the environment of the Oscars. And I think part of that is because he's not a movie guy. Like, the most the most movies he's known for is Harold and Kumar and the Smurfs. He's not a movie guy. He does Broadway and he does TV. That's why his good hosting jobs have been for Broadway and TV, because those are the fields he's familiar with. They didn't pick Neil Patrick Harris because of his credentials in the movie world. They picked him because of his credentials as an award show host. But Mm. the Oscars are not like the Tonys and the Emmys, and they didn't try to incorporate any of the stuff from those award shows to try and make it more Neil Patrick Harris-centric. And the result was a man who did not like the dialogue he was saying, Mm -hmm. did not like the the environment he was in, had Mm. pain in his eyes whenever he said a cringeworthy joke. Like, when he said that bitches be tripping yo joke about Gone Girl, I saw a desire for death in his eyes. I could see it for, like, a split second. It was there. See, you want to know why they chose Neil Patrick Harris? You must have been viewing it at 60 frames a second, because I didn't catch that. I saw it. It was was there. (laughs) She was there. She was, she was, she, what she said was bitches be tripping, yo. What he I can only imagine, I can only imagine, me. like, oh, go on. I was, Sorry, I was saying, on. what he said was bitches be tripping, yo. What he thought was, kill me. God. I can only imagine, like, you envision uh, Neil Patrick Harris, and I was like, he's just there, bitches be tripping, yo. And then, like, suddenly he, we see on his head, this is the end. My only friend, man. <laughs> like okay. some kind of apocalypse now montage. I thought no, he was but... He was just like, bitches be tripping, yo. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, um. We... I want to try to. Oh, sorry. Uh, you, you go on? We. I want to quote something about why they chose Neil Patrick Harris. We are thrilled to have Neil host the Oscars. We have known him his adult, entire adult life, and we have watched him explode as a great performer in feature films, television, and stage. To work with, to work with him on the Oscars is the perfect storm. All of his resources and talent coming together on a global stage. What feature films? Again, there's the Smurfs, and there's Harold and Kumar. 
That's and there's a million ways to die in the West. Starship That's, Troopers. What yeah. film career are they referring to that he's so legendary for? Like this. Mm -hmm. uh, I think they don't Ellen, only mention that he's in movies. At least Ellen DeGeneres has done very famous movie roles, or like at least one. And, and you know, he's she does a talk show in which she talks about movies among other things. So it made sense to, it made sense in that respect. Neil Patrick Harris, he's he was successful in other award shows. That's the only reason. It's the only possible line of thinking they could have had. Neil's distinctive charm and showmanship make him the ideal host to honor the Oscar legacy and ensure we all enjoy another unforgettable celebration. You know what it's like? It's like the people who put Robin Williams in bad movies. It's like, we've got Robin Williams in our movie, let's just assume he'll be automatically funny. So, and not actually put effort into the writing itself, because he'll make it funny himself, because he's a talented guy. He'll do the effort for us. It's the same thing. So, here's what Neil Patrick Harris had to say about his reaction to hosting the Oscars. He says, I grew up watching the Oscars and was always in such awe of some of the greats who host the show. To be asked to follow the footsteps of Johnny Carson... Billy Crystal, Ellen DeGeneres, and everyone who else who had the great fortune of hosting is a bucket list dream come true. I mean, sure. I mean, if you get asked to host the Oscars, you're not going to say no. It's a big opportunity, even if they don't allow you to be funny. It's, and even if it very largely damaged his reputation as a great award show host. I mean, this might be controversial, and I don't... Hmm. Okay, here's what it is. The Oscars mm -hmm. have always been desperate. For for quite a while now, they've been very desperate in their writing. But there's a, there's a certain desperation in the pick of hosting that's been present since the fateful year of 2010 and the ever-so-infamous bomb of Anne Hathaway and James Franco. Yes. Like, before that, we had Hugh Jackman. We had other guys. We, we were doing fine. And then that happened. Yep, that's when the... I still don't know why that happened. I know... Like, Anne Hathaway and James Franco. It's like, let, let's just what? take two hats and put the names of all the actors we can think of in one and all the actresses we and just like, mm -mm, there we go, there's our host. Why? They weren't very relevant to the movies presented except, I guess, that rock movie that James Franco was in. And they are not award show hosts. The result of that year was, was just such laziness. I that remember that year very well. Yeah. After it became one of the worst Oscar performances Oscar hosting jobs in history, probably. They they've been trying very hard to pick a, as good a host as they could possibly get. Like immediately after that, they got Billy Crystal, because you know Billy Crystal was great in the '80s. He did great Oscar hosting jobs. Mm -hmm. What they failed to realize was that was that it wasn't the '80s anymore, and it worked about as well as a car show hosted by an old jalopy. It was not good. And then, since then, they got the idea, okay, picking from the classics won't work. What we need is to, is to grab our youth market. Just take that young audience and grab it by the balls. So they've been getting Seth MacFarlane, they've been getting Ellen DeGeneres, they've been getting Neil Patrick Harris, anybody who young people consider to be very high energy and charismatic. Mark my words, next year it's either going to be Hugh Jackman again or it's going to be Tina Fey and Amy Poehler. You know, actually, funny enough, I, I, I will remember... take Hugh Jackman. I will. You know, funny enough, I remember last year, me and Mike, we actually discussed that, and at one point we thought that Eddie Murphy would be um, would be the host, funny enough. Yeah, but yeah. Remember, Mike? We, we, yeah. we, thought, oh, we yeah. thought it would be Eddie Murphy. But. Yeah, because the, the, they, they were talking about it at one point, and it was going to be produced. should. Why not? It, it would have been produced not, by that's... Brett Ratner, and but that it just fell right through. It was like, that would have been great. That would have been like a great little like comeback for Eddie Murphy to host the Oscars, you know? It, not really, because the writing isn't good. It's not the host that's the problem. It's the writing. It has to be, because you've got these great, talented people, and they're not doing funny things. They're not doing anything. Neil Patrick Harris sat out of half of the Oscar performance. He didn't have any real comedy bits. He only had the one musical number, and it was very underwhelming musical number at that. What, that opening number? You didn't like that either? That was... 
Okay, look, when you well, compare it to... I like was pretty... I was, I was pretty... I, yeah, I was, I was pretty it's... amazed by that. I was kind of like, okay, they've got the whole whoa, last... Whoa. Come on, that was not nice. as, It was not as good as the other opening numbers that he's done for, like, the Tonys and the Emmys. It was not as good yeah, as the was, opening numbers. That, like, like, that was fantastic. Did. Or even Seth MacFarlane. Seth MacFarlane did better opening numbers than Neil Patrick yeah, Harris did. Yeah, but that's did comparing it. Was, it. No, it, no, it, no. It was so average. It was so forgettable. I don't recall the melody in the slightest. You don't have to. All you have to be is mem- mesmerized know. by the the glass that comes down behind him and the the shadow that that that, that was really a, cool. That's a cool. I, I like that effect. Entire opening number, not when there's better effects to be had and better music to be had, and not when it was the highlight of Neil Patrick Harris's hosting. Like the rest of it was spent like occasionally coming out to tell a joke, and once he was in his underwear. Ha ha, funny. Ugh. Imitating yeah. Birdman. Yeah, exactly. Uh, that was a reference to a nominee. It's a Birdman, but it was still like, eh, really? We're doing I mean, that? I mean, what else he's going to do to top Elton's oh. hosting last year? I yeah, mean, he's got to do something. He possibly top a pizza and a selfie. That's such a high bar. Well, I guess it was, because I remember him talking about that with her on the Ellen DeGeneres show. He's like, how do I top you? Like, wh- I, I was talking with the writers, I'm trying to figure out how to do this, you know, thinking about stuff. Uh, can I? Ellen DeGeneres basically just hosted his uh, her, the Oscars like it was her talk show, and it worked a little bit, but it wasn't the same environment. It, it, was, it, was, it just came across as, like, childish half the time. Like, oh, we're making a selfie reference, aren't we? Okay, the thing, okay, with me, I have not seen any of the other uh, Neil Patrick Harris Harris performances, like in the Tonys or the Emmys or whatever, but I, I will be comparing it to to pretty much other hosts, and I will admit, as an Oscar host, I kind of do like him. You know, he's not that bad. Like, I feel like he's definitely a step up from Ellen DeGeneres because last year that was just like, wow, that <laughs> honestly that sucked. Like yeah. I really do like Ellen, but that was te- that was just terrible. She was awkward. The the jokes were never funny. She did jack all. Like the same oh, exact I took... things can be said about Neil though. No, like but, he like... was awkward. He had no funny jokes. Let me finish. He had an amazing trick with the, the with the box the first, though. The first oh. act was amazing. The first like that opening number was phenomenal. That that opening act alone was way better than last year's Oscars. Like hands down, Last and I will awesome. admit, and I will admit that some of the jokes are, you know, I will admit there are some that fell flat. There are mixed, some that fell flat, but some are pretty good. I like that they gave him that edgy tone, like they gave him a bit of an edge. So like, I wouldn't really mind seeing, like, I wouldn't mind seeing Neil Patrick Harris to be hosting the Oscars again. Like, I would be ha- you know, I would be happy. Like in terms of Oscar standards, like he is better than others. Like most, be- most definitely better than Ellen. Um, I but I will admit, yeah. What? What's like? Honestly, I really don't get the box. Like, I really well, like, don't. It, ar- was, he, it was it was weird. It was disappointing. He 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 had like this list of predictions, and the predictions just turned out to be more jokes about the movies that really should have just been in the opening. I but think weren't. the biggest problem, I think the biggest thing is that he had such a huge build like the problem was that he had such a huge build up to it. And like the, the the ending it turns out to be predictions of stupid things that happen during the show and it's like I don't get it, honestly. Well, the here that's the thing. It's like it's like how do you you sort of think when you say that uh, how how does he know? That people are going to come up when they, when they, uh, give their Oscar speech. How are they going to know uh, who they're going to give a shout out to or what they're going to say? That that was what I found to be rather interesting. And I was well, I wasn't watching. I wasn't doing their uh, their uh, their little box cam the whole time. You know, you could you could log on to the Oscars website and. They had a special. They had a live camera going on. Uh, oh, oh, yeah, I just didn't focused on that. the. Yeah, you know, I'll be honest. Like, 
uh, well, what is it that I was trying to say about the box? It's like, I kind of get why they want to they want to do the box thing because like Neil Patrick Harris is also part magician, so like I guess they want to put that part of his personality in there. But other than that, like, I just didn't get it. It like, had nothing it was to do so with magic. Big. It wasn't it a was... magician thing. It was just this little joke. I, I, I just felt like I just felt like it was just a huge build up for nothing. But other than that, I will say that I you know, as an Oscar host, I am satisfied with Neil pa- Patrick Harris better than others. Would like to see him again. Yeah. Me too. You know the, the Tony Awards I... two years ago, that referenced his magic act much better. I, I saw a little bit of that, I think. Was, the, was that the one where the Newsies was up? Uh, yeah, it involved the Newsies. It was mostly a Pippin thing, but... Hmm. Skip it, internet. I should probably check out the Tom... You know, uh, I've was, decided I, I'm, that... I'm starting Go to on. think, like, I should check out more of, like more different award shows. Like, most namingly, I should seriously check out, like, the Tony Awards and the Annies. Like, I need to <laughs> legit check them out. A- Annies. Annies. Annie's. There, is the. This is the awards for um, the highest prestigious honor for animation, for animated features, animated TV shows, and all that stuff. Like I just recently, like now, I'm starting to understand that in the animation community, the Annie's are more legit than the Oscars. Mm-hmm. Which is why we haven't. Which is why, as you've said before, we haven't had a best picture nomination be an animated film since Beauty and the Beast. Well, technically, there's, like, Up and Toy Story 3, but, like, like everyone knows that it feels like it doesn't really count because, like, they're in there because of the big inflation on the Best Picture nominees. Like, there's no way in hell they're gonna win. And plus, Toy yeah. Story 3, that was the year that they nominated, like, ten movies. Yeah, yep, yeah, I remember that year, yep. I think so, yeah. Yeah, that was insane. Okay. Or they haven't had anything that won or something, I guess. It's like, it's like Beauty and the Beast it, was the it. one that, like, it feels, like, legit. It's like, holy crap, an animated film got nominated for Best Picture. It was wow. the first time like, novelty. I mean, it's not, like, it's not like Beauty and the Beast won. Nor would it. Because it's animation. It's not like it's art. <laughs> You're kidding, it's Beauty and the Beast! I'm being it sarcastic. Des- oh, you're being sarcastic. Use, 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 use your, perce- your, your perception. Sorry, sorry. I'm being See? sarcastic. I'm not, I'm not good. One, I'm not really good with sarcasm. Number two, it, Beauty and the Beast is one of my favorite movies. So, so yeah, with the the reaction to this, the Oscars and, hit, and Neil Patrick Harris hosting is a little bit mixed. Like, you could read the reviews on the Wikipedia page I was reading. I'm kind of reading this stuff. and There's some negative. There's some good... At, Mostly, at best, mo- I've heard people call him okay. Yeah, it was like that, or... It was like, I was reading the reviews as Jada was talking, and it was mostly, like, in line with Jada was talking about. It was, like, very bland and bombed, and it was like... And I read some, like, positive reviews where James and Matt were like, Oh, he was okay, you know... But the f- bear in numbers. mind, I will say that I'm not like Jada. I haven't seen... Like, like I said, I haven't seen any of the other... Uh, Neil Patrick Harris uh, hosting jobs. Right. Um, like, where she's comparing it to his other works, I'm pretty much comparing it to the other Oscar right. hosts. Well, I'm, doing, I'm doing both. Don't get me wrong. I'm comparing him to the other Oscar hosts as well as the other Oscar hosts done so, by him. So, the, the telecast gathered nearly 37.2 million views in the United States, making it the least watched Oscar ceremony since the 81st Academy Awards in 2009. Damn. Oh my god, no one gives a crap. <gasps> people Wait, are starting people are starting to care about the Oscars as yeah, much as 2009. the voters. She said, was it 2009? Did you mm. check? Uh, was Cause it? Because that, that, that ceremony was awesome. That, that was greatly done with the Beyonce number and then the Dark Knight references, the, the Heath Ledger tribute. That was like the last good Oscar ceremony before the well, James Franco and Hathaway bomb. I guess uh, it wasn't uh, watched that much back then. Maybe that has something to do with their reasoning behind picking Anne Hathaway and James Franco. 
to be the hosts of the Oscars. I, I will never, ever, ever, ever understand that. So, um, yeah, um, we kind of briefly mentioned the, the musical numbers where Jada was like, I didn't like the opening number. The mu- opening number for me, I was like, what? Number. Be- <laughs> Singular. Yeah, number. Yeah. I mean, the part that really threw me out was Jack Black coming in. Oh, yeah. <laughs> out of nowhere. That was odd. That was, that I was like... put me in mind of that one Chris Rock interview where he, like, tried to make jokes about how the animation industry was biased and he ended up just insulting the entire industry in all the wrong ways. Like, the intent oh, yeah. was there, but it, yeah. it, was, it, did not, it was not delivered well. Oh, yeah. I yeah. remember. It's like, yeah. you just said it, but it's a lie. And then you get a million dollars. Yep. Jack that. Black kind of had a similar thing going on with its whole like. Yeah. Oh, what was oh, yeah, he like, said? I think it's like he he, he like, placed bets on um, Pixar. I think that was it. He was talking about how like, Hollywood is, isn't was. There a way to, isn't there a way to talk about how how Hollywood and the and the Academy is incredibly biased towards animated films without insulting animated films? Is it that hard to do? I guess it is because the Oscar like, is written even, by the Academy, and they don't actually like animated films. Yeah, like even this there year, is. like there's a controver- there's a recent controversy where Dwayne the Rock Johnson is like, like it's the same thing. He doesn't mean any harm, but like he's pretty much saying how animation is the pretty is the most it's like it's the most successful genre in Hollywood. It's like, no, no Rock J- Dwayne 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 Dwayne, <laughs> medium, not genre. <laughs> Media. You're gonna get your ass kicked if you say genre. Because animated films. You gotta kick his ass. Academy, Come on. Here's what it is: animated films in the minds of Hollywood and the Academy equals kids' films. That's yeah. There's and, no such thing as grown-up animation. It's kids' movies, and kids' movies are just all the same. They're kids' movies. Yeah, and that's the uh, biggest problem with the voters. The voters are pretty much the biggest hot button when it comes to, um, like, what's wrong with the Academy. Um, like basically, the mo like from a bunch of people that they got, most of the voters basically it is actually very very rare that you would find anybody who has seen all the movies, not just the wide releases, but even like the limited independent films, and they would vote by their decision. Most of the time, like people would vote by what their kids think, or they haven't seen all of them, so they'll pick the one that they have seen. Or they'll just not vote at all. Or maybe they like the actor. Yeah, and and, and it's just so and so dumb. Like I remember one of the stupidest things that I have seen is one voter and he reacted pretty much the same way that the internet did regarding the whole controversy of how the Lego movie was not nominated for best animated pi- uh, feature. And he was pretty much, he was writing an entire rant how the Lego movie got nominated and two films that he said nobody has seen has pretty much, like, this stupid Chinese piece of crap and this other side of the I don't know what it is. And it's like, okay, you no, have no again, right to wrong, vote if you're going to be like reaction. That. Wrong reaction. The correct that answer it, is, Big Hero Six got nominated, and the Lego Movie didn't. That is the no, correct that's answer. No, another, that's another. That's another story. Yeah, we'll get but into that. But you know that. what I mean? Like, if you're gonna react that way, you should not even be voting. If you have like, if you're just gonna be whining and complaining and not even t- bother to watch any of the other nominees, you sh- you shouldn't even be allowed to vote. Like, what if is- you don't know what you're doing, don't do it. Like you, it's well, your. But it's then you'll isolate the, then you'll isolate the Chris Cham voters. <laughs> okay, I've been, tr- I've been trying for like fifteen minutes now, and I'm gonna try my damnedest to like post links to Neil Patrick Harris doing hosting things and musical numbers in other shows. Not to watch right now, but to no, watch no. at some point okay. in time. Yeah. To like give you some idea as to. Understandable. What it is that the Understandable. Oscars should have been but basically what i'm trying to say like with all this the controversy that the voters basically do not care about animation is is like what i stated before how the animation community nowadays they care more about the annie awards than the oscars because at least the people at uh asifa they know what they're doing they know what animation means right they understand the medium 
and that like that's the biggest problem. The voting, like the voting for the nominees, that's fine. Like at least they got perfect, like they got people who specialize in that category to go and vote. Mm-hmm. That's fine. That's good. But the but then like the voters who they get is pretty much all the me- like all the different members of the academy, and that's where it falls flat. You know, honestly, I feel like the people who specializes in animation should not only vote for who will get nominated, but also who will win. Because they they know animation. They've done this crap before. They should be the one they should be the ones honoring it. The problems with the Oscar voter biases are far from limited to the animated features though. Oh yeah. Definitely. Far from limited. Yeah, it's like, and basically, it's like now we're discovering. It's like, no, it's not just animators. It's not just in animation. It's just in, like, mostly because like, it's animation because the animation community is really focusing on that. It's just in recent years we're starting to discover more that the the voters are just stupid in general. Mm. Right. So, what about? the presenters presenting the awards. Are there any moments of the presenters that strike out the most when watching the Oscars? Do we want to start with Sean Penn or should we save that? No, we'll save that. Okay. Uh, for um, me, on, for me honestly, I need to start off the one that kind of stuck out the most for me would probably be um Edita Menzel and John Travolta because like oh, they yeah. really try to it really did feel shoehorned in that um like they wanted to do um, like that little incident, that like, little joke thing of uh, yeah, Adele from, Dis- last, from last year. Yep. Yeah, like <laughs> it really did feel shoehorned in. I did. I have to. Admit, it was a, it was a great Menzel, comeback, though. Yeah, I will admit with indeed, like I will admit there is a bit of a side that is cute, like with a Adi- like it is funny and nice to see Adina Menzel have like a payback. Like I can't stay mad at Adina. She she really is a beautiful and talented woman. Well, but my God, you... John, Tra- John Travolta! Holy crap! This guy, really, this dude is freaking creeping me out. It was like, oh, what did he so do that was so wrong? Like, I feel like people got unnecessarily angry because he kissed Scarlett Johansson on the cheek. Like, I felt like so he got... It was like a formal thing. Yeah, it was. Like he was. No, I feel like he's being a little too creepy. Like, I like you, you like... see, he, he's just going around touching, touching Adina's face. It's just like, okay, you're starting to creep me out, John. Could you please stop? I feel like there was a bit of a double standard there. I feel like if friggin' Liam Hemsworth had kissed Scarlett Johansson on the cheek or something, there would be a very different reaction. I'm not. Much I'm not less talking than... about. I'm not talking about the Scarlett Johansson thing. I'm talking just the. I do mean like, in general, though. Like John Travolta to Adina Menzel, it just it felt awkward. It's like she su- like Adina Menzel supplied the charm. John Travolta supplied the um, supplied the awkwardness. I'm just so over the Adele Dazeem joke. Like it so it wasn't even funny at the beginning. Why did we focus on it so much? Why was it such a big deal? It's just a big they- fuck up, she- and everybody focused Frozen on the fuck up. Frozen, Mispronounced why. a name. Yeah, because Frozen. I mean, if it, if it had been, like, whoever the thug presented any of the other songs. If, if, yeah. Yeah, pretty much. If he mispronounced uh, like, Pharrell really... Williams, then nobody would have given a shit. Yeah, like, yeah. I feel like, you know, honestly, over the ages, like, when I discover more, when like, ever since I discovered more about Adina Menzel, I, I definitely have much more respect to her. She, Like I said, she definitely is a talented woman. Yeah. And, she, like, I really don't get it. Man. Like, she deserves better than just be like, her, her, she was called a dog to It's like, come on, really, dude? Like, plus, she deserves you know, more. Plus, deserves you know. I enjoyed that. I enjoyed that little moment they had. Yeah. Plus, you there know. was laughter in my, cri- in, my, in my crib. Plus, you know, the man's dyslexic. So oh, he is? That. Yes, yeah. he is. He is. Which makes a lot of people really fucking insensitive. But whatever, this cute little idea of Menzel reference. Let's just dwell on it till the cows come home. <laughs> well, so well, someone else here brought it up, but not me. No. Yeah. And then, so, so. like I already mentioned, like Dwayne the Rock Johnson, like that—that's another one that felt forced. Like I, I forgot the girl that that she was with, but then like with Dwayne the Rock Johnson, was, I've already um, mentioned the animation thing. Zoe Sandel. 
Yeah, Zoe Sadell. Like, I don't know, it did feel a bit forced, but I will admit, once again, I will admit it is kind of cute. It's like when um, Dwayne The Rock Johnson talks about it, it's like, I remember when I cried at The Lion King. It was like, wait, how old were you? Were you like 20? That doesn't <laughs> yeah. matter. Yeah, that was. I was. I did. I did. I did. Chuck. I chuckled at that. I was like, "What?" That is kind of. Um, Jared Leto made a tired Meryl Streep joke. Because you see, Meryl Streep gets nominated for Oscars a lot. Mm -hmm. Isn't Mm -hmm. that funny? Yes, it is funny. It's funny today. Just beat him Jared Leto. Oh yeah, he. Uh, oh yes, the guy who was. Uh, he was a he was a cross dresser last. Uh, last he was year. a cross dresser oh, the last time, yep, so yep. that's why he won. He yep. was not a cross dresser. He was a transsexual woman, and don't even get me started. Okay. All right. Yeah. That. All right. Sorry. Jade is correct. Jade this is correct. So. Will, I don't mean. I don't mean to offend. Like I. I did I not mean. mean to I did watch. That. I did watch Dale's Bios Club after we did that Oscars episode. So I kind of. It was a really good movie, hmm. and they d- deserve the Oscars. Nope. Nope. I'm not oh, gonna go fuck. into it. All right. No. Fuck it. Fuck it. <laughs> um. So. Abort. 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 <laughs> what other presenter moments uh, should we talk about? Anything? Well, okay. Look. Uh. Hmm. hmm. I don't How about, remember. I don't. Honestly... Sean Penn. How about Sean Penn okay, for uh... Best Picture? Oh. <laughs> Oh dear! I was really, Sean Penn? What was he thinking? I know. What part of There's his brain time... told him that that was a good idea? To oh. quote, okay, to quote Professor Oak in the Pokemon games, there is a time and place for everything, but not now. There was not a time and place for that. There's not a time and place for immigration <laughs> jokes in the Oscars. No, because like, here's the thing. I understand why he did it because, like Sean Penn, um, he knew the director very well, and often they would do jo- like jokes uh, back and forth at the same time. But that doesn't change the fact that he should not do it. <laughs> God, you you have a, a direct. A, was it Best Picture or Best Director? No, Best, best picture. picture. It was Best Picture. You have a Best Picture win for, given to a director who's. Not white. That's a big deal in the Oscars. In, mm-hmm. in Oscars, that is so white. That's true, actually. actually. Holy crap. Wait, yeah. he's, wait uh, he's not white? He's a Mexican. He's Mexican. What? White? I, I, oh my goodness. I gotta rewatch. I couldn't a, a catch Mexican that. He's director, not white? A Mexican director wins Best Picture. This is a big deal. And the response yep. to the Oscars is an immigration joke. Yep. No! Although, I think, like, that's no. not really the academy who who did that that's just sean penn himself yeah that's that's him i wouldn't blame the academy badly off the entire academy it reflects badly off the whole award show like it's like when one it reflects off of sean penn i think yeah it's just yeah yeah. i would say the writers like you say more than the academy i'm just okay it's like Mm -hmm. when one kid is like a big fuck up and ends up embarrassing the entire classroom at the school assembly you know it's like that. It's not necessarily fair, even if the rest of the classroom can be douchebags sometimes. Okay. So you know how to keep trying for them. But it's it, it, as a per as a person who who teaches in classrooms, I actually I actually have never felt like that. It's a thing. You that know, happens. I've had. It's a thing that happens. Yeah. Okay. Okay. There was another one that there was like this incident with the presenter, wasn't it? There was a guy named Terrence Howard. He kind of was he was presenting the uh, films which whiplashed an imitation game Selma for the best picture segment, and he kind of flubbed a bit. Like the the story behind his um, presenting are you was talking about not Rody. Yeah. He was high as a kite, wasn't he? I don't know, but he was on uh, to the Tonight Show and with Jimmy Fallon. He was explaining, he was doing like a commentary of it, where he was saying that he w- there's a teleprompter. He, w- he was given lines, but it was like, ah, no, 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 I, I, I memorized it. I know it up here. And he did, went up there, and he just like, um. He looked like he was having a mental breakdown. Like the imitation <laughs> game was so good, you guys. It was so good. 
Yeah. So... You're all beautiful people. Oh, yeah. That one. Like, That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. That presenter. Yep. And then you know, like he banged the microphone stand or something. So he's like. Da, 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 da. <laughs> My dad thought he was high as a kite. I, I think I was I was pretty much busy tweeting and I was like, "What the fridge? Did someone pull a stupid? Is he, is he pulling a? Did he had a, a sudden brain fart on the, uh, at the Oscars?" Yeah, it was just it was another iconic like. To be fair, moment. that is kind of common at the Oscars. So. <laughs> Otherwise, the other presenters were just fine. Eh, they're not really that memorable. Oh. So. Well, here is. Here's something that I was I was actually noticing was Eddie Murphy, um, and maybe I just I just sort of thought of this. Huh? I noticed this. Then I don't talk too much during this uh, during during this one uh, uh, podcast that we're doing. So when I start talking, at least I'd like to have people not interrupting. Yep. Ah. Uh, Eddie Murphy had just been on uh, on that SNL 40 event that that was going on at the same yeah. at the same time, and when I was watching him in that, uh, he came on after Chris Rock was doing this whole corny routine that I don't even remember. It was that forgettable, and when he came on there, he looked like a deer in the headlights. Like, okay, I'm Eddie Murphy. I'm here. He did not. He did not look like he he knew what he was doing there, so the Oscars come around, and he's uh, he he doesn't say much except for just launch right into the nominees. He just takes out the list, and people are clapping, and before they're even done clapping for him, he's like, "And the nominees are." <laughs> yeah. I'm like, are you just here to get out of here as soon as possible? Yeah. Honestly, yeah. Honestly, Honestly, what got to me about that bit was Neil Patrick Harris's introduction of him, where he, he like lists the things that Eddie Murphy is known for, the big comedies, the SNL, and he ends it with, in other words, he doesn't need this. And the audience laughed, and I laughed, but for a very different reason. And my reason was, yes, he does. Yeah. He needs it. Come on, his, Neil. He needs even it for his career. I mean, even to this day, Disney is having a very hard time to find his career in one of the Disneyland attractions, so he definitely needs this. Act like Eddie Murphy is like this untouchable dude who's like beyond money grubbing at this point in his career. Yeah. Everybody knows Eddie Murphy's net worth, $85 million. Gee. Mm. Mm -hmm. I guess he doesn't need this after all. Once again, I'll keep it in mind for the ransom. But you know, there's more to there's more to relevance than, than money, and there's also you know, a lack of embarrassment, dignity, uh, stuff to do instead of around. So he lines under your microphone and playing video games, which I see so in these days. I think like Eddie Murphy was the least energetic. Like, I felt like I didn't really recognize him when he was presenting. It was like. It's not really Eddie Murphy that I remember. Like, this is not the Eddie Murphy that I remember seeing in films like The Nutty Professor or Mulan or Shrek or stuff. Like, this is a man whose soul got freaking sucked out. Like everybody in the Oscars, he was bored. He was clearly bored and did not want to be there. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Let's see, what else is there to say? This Lupita piece of crap play. I mean, Lupita. this piece of crap place didn't give me an Oscar when I when I was nominated for Dream Girls. So screw this. <laughs> so let's uh, get into the performances of the. Um, Wait, I the... have one more thing to say. Yeah. Lupi Lupita Nyong'o's dress was really pretty. Who? That's all I got. I really liked her fancy pearl dress. That was. Is... Paris clip that I'll be sharing. That, I didn't now think that was, can be good again. That wasn't oh. pearls. Those were diamonds, I believe. They looked like pearls to me. They were they, round and white. They were diamonds, and they it was a really expensive dress. And actually, if you, I was watching in, Inside Edition, and the dress was stolen. Yeah, the dress was stolen, and the dress was recovered, and it was pearls. They were fake pearls, but seriously, look it up. They were pearls. 
Mm, okay. That's usually the part of the awards show that I skip about the dresses and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, the, the red carpet. Oh, who are you wearing? Oh, what a lovely I, dress you are wearing. I, I saw that she was wearing it when she came to, like, present, and I was like, oh, what a pretty dress. Yeah, I don't notice that stuff either. So well, as far as performances go, let's discuss Stephanie Germanotta. Yes, that's the biggie. What yes. she do? Who? You know who she is? No. Nope. Are you talking about Lady Gaga and trying to be clever about it? Lady Gaga. God damn it, James. Oh, oh there. Oh my God, yes. Try to be Mr. Clever Guy. Yep, he was clever with it. I liked it. Uh, so. I know Lady Gaga's real name. <laughs> yes. I am smart. Okay. okay. <laughs> She Talk was. About remember it. that. Pro, remember that one time she was performing with that Richard Starkey guy. Uh, Ringo Starr. Yeah. No, that. come on. But Mike, you're looking at me like, who, who the heck you, are you talking about? Ted. Exactly. <laughs> when did that happen? I don't remember. It it didn't. I was just I was just oh. being clever again. Oh. <laughs> oh. Ringo Starr is right. not his real name. People like, were so surprised that Lady Gaga, the famous singer, could sing and look pretty. They, they were so surprised that she looked pretty and normal. Like, oh my god, it's almost as if she looks weird in video music videos on purpose. Like that is her natural state. What to do with this information? Well, yeah, here's the thing. Like, like, that isn't that the whole... If, the, if this whole uh, side of Stephanie Germanata that does not call attention to herself like Madonna. Uh, like she, she has a talented voice. That's been a known thing from the beginning. She chooses to make pop songs, guys. Just because mm-hmm. you like the pop song this doesn't mean that it's shocking when she like suddenly has a voice that's not auto-tuned. Oh, and yeah. she does have I... a very good voice. And she's not Julie Andrews. Oh, no. she has a very good voice. No. Oh, yeah, she's saying... She sang with Tony Bennett doing a, a duet once. I, I thought she was phenomenal. She did, like, a whole album with Tony Bennett. Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah, it was a duet album. Tony Bennett is kind of like the Kanye West of old-style music in that he does, like, duets and features with everybody. Mm-hmm. Everybody. <laughs> mm-hmm. If you, like, look up a, a Tony Bennett album, it's basically just him and other people. He does yep. the thing by himself. Yep. Know that all too well. Okay, the one thing I did notice about about her performance here was she she has her own when when she sings when she sings pop music she's got she's got that uh, flair to her when she sings uh, with the more classical stuff like she did with uh, Tony Bennett. Uh, she's got that side to her. When she sings Sound of Music, uh, she was she was trying to be Julie Andrews mm-hmm. in her voice, in her intonations. Mm-hmm. And well, to be she... Fair, and at the same time, she was looking at, at Celine... She was looking like Celine Dion. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, with the. Uh, hmm? I was just Go saying, on. to be fair, everybody who does like Maria in Sound of Music tries to sound like Julie Andrews. Like, that's like everybody. Carrie Underwood did. Friggin' any high school or community theater performance you'll see of it, they're trying to sound like Julie Andrews. That's mm-hmm. the objective. Lady Gaga's not alone on that. Yeah. Yeah, you can notice her tattoos. That's the yeah. big thing. Yeah, like, to be very honest, when I'm, like, the thing is that, I think the big thing was that, like, we all know Lady Gaga, how she is right now. But, like, the fact that she was singing it, I, the biggest thing was that this is completely out of her realm. We wouldn't really associate Lady Gaga with, like, singing something, like, from The Sound of Music. And that's what, that's really one big element that's really, like, that gets you off guard, and it really is um, mind blowing. And she really does. I will admit, like, what she did do, like, 
rather if it's trying to copy Julie Andrews or not, it really is a beautiful performance. I gotta say, that was amazing. Like, the only weird thing that is a bit distracting is that she does, like, she should have picked a better dress because, like, uh, like for, for some of the times, like, I keep staring at this random tr trumpet that's on her arm. Like, I don't, like, I don't know the context of, like, why she ha has it, but, like, can you at least have a bit of dignity, try to cover that up? Well, I, I don't think it's necessarily undignified to show your tattoos. No, well, yeah. I'm not saying it's undignified, it's just, it feels random. You well, know, like, you, you have this, like, this completely, like, like, trying to do this big homage to, um, yes? Music. Mind you that before she performed, when she came to the red carpet, she was wearing these long plastic red gloves. They look like, it, like, rubber gloves. Yeah, like, yeah, like, cover, that's what I mean, rubber, yeah, that's what I mean. Did it but cover yeah, her whole arm? I think so. I, I don't, that's the only thing she wore. There's nothing like too weird, like previous awards that she's done. So it was like she she wasn't too normal, but she had some weird aspect of wearing gloves to the. But still, like at least have something to cover that because like with that know. performance, I feel like the trumpet just feels distracting. I mean the mm. tattoos I didn't were. I didn't, I didn't I didn't didn't mind the tattoos. There, there was huh. those were fun. I was like oh oh a tattoo that was pretty cool. No, but like that's but Here. bear in mind this is my that's my only complaint. Other than that, it's a like, nitpick. Holy crap, that was it's a nitpick. It's, oh, yeah. yeah, it's, it's like, one of the biggest highlights of the Oscars. Like, holy mm -hmm. crap. Yeah, when you're... Hmm? I did notice that she didn't hit the high note at the end. Like, there was a <laughs> high note, like, a fourth chord high note that she didn't hit. She, like, hit, like, one key shorter. You know how Julie Andrews is known for the four chord thing? Well, Lady Gaga oh, yeah. was still very clearly only three chords. But that yeah. was, like, a minor thing. I'm not gonna fault her. It's not like I can sing that high. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, um, I think, uh, yeah, one last thing about the, the trumpet tat, and then I'll, I'll drop it. Um, apparently she got, apparently she got that just, uh, what, a month, a month or so before, a couple of weeks even before, uh, the Oscars. So that was kind of a fresh thing. And uh, if anything, uh, if, if you're trying to set the mood that this is the sound of music, that this is the 1940s, uh, the the dress does it, the music does it, then the tattoos take things out of out of context, mm -hmm. out of history. Mm -hmm. They're not bad tattoos. I'm not complaining about that. They're just out of place. I, yeah. I didn't see authenticity as a priority. I, yeah, didn't I just think thought it was just really a performance. Easy. They were just singing the songs, like they're not just like, to... oh, this is like recreate the scenes or anything. Yeah, it was just the performance. That's what it is. It's not like it. Oh, we're in the nineteen forty now, and just uh, do that thing. But <laughs> I think it was the nineteen twenties voice. But uh, the the other performance that blew my mind was the everything was everything's awesome performance with oh. the Lily Island, Tegan, Sarah. Yeah, and I was. Just like, Did that blow your mind? I was expecting it to be the highlight of the show. Uh, like, I was like... It was, it was trippy. It was trippy as fuck. It I'll, was admit, like, it was, I'll admit, it was fun, but it wasn't really the best... Uh, no, best no, no. It was, it was like out of nowhere. Like, you see Will Arnett as Batman doing his bit. and I loved that, when, when they brought in Will Arnett as Batman. And that makes sense, because it's connected to the movie. Yeah, yeah, it is. It was, it was. I it thought just, that was hilarious. And then they see, got on those two girls... Yeah, Tegan and Sarah, which, um, I, I, I was there when they announced the, the, who was going to perform, I was like, okay, T uh, Lonely Island, okay, sure, sure, sure. Tegan and Sarah, uh, they're good singers. Well, they yeah. were trying to go for, like, a, an 8-bit-ish feel, like a, a popish 8-bit-ish feel that the movie kind of had. They were handing yeah. out Michael like, Oscars. Yes, that was, the, that was also a good oh, thing, yeah. yes. Because, uh, that's what the... the Reaction was like, oh, you didn't nominate us for the, the Oscars. We'll just hand out Lego Oscars instead to everybody else. We'll have our own Oscars. Yeah, fuck you. Blackjack and hookers. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Hold on. Yeah, the oh, yeah, the the presentation. The 
like the presentation of that song. Uh, that song, uh, I gotta admit, that was, that was something interesting. That song is still annoying to huh. me. I'm sorry. I, if, I, I like Tegan and Sarah. I like some of what Lonely Island has done before. It's just somehow combined. They're they are not salt and pepper, you know. They're not they're not like ketchup and mustard. They don't complement each other very well. Like, you mean like the oh. expression salt and pepper, or do you mean like the singer salt and pepper? That's how I was just thinking. I was like, you're talking about the salt and pepper as the the duo that did this. Because I don't think push it real. I don't think that's what they were going for. No, I was gonna say they're not going for that, James. No, 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 no. What I'm saying is they're they're not two. They are not two elements that complement each other well in the dish. Like peanut butter and jelly. Yes. You know, like if I could be. Oh my gosh. Go on, Matt. Okay. You know, if I could be honest, like, it, I'm not saying that the performance wasn't bad. Like, it was, it was pretty, it was cute in its own merits. But I feel like the biggest issue was that it was trying a little too hard, honestly. You know like, they I mean? try to throw in so many elements of like Legos and stuff like that. It's just like, like if they had like just the stand and like the singers, like just that. Like, maybe, like, cut out, like, some of the other performers and, like, dancers and all that stuff. Like, it would have been fine. But other than that, it feels like they're trying a little too hard. You know and I that, were... it, like, it feels more distracting than it is entertaining. You know what I think they were trying to do? I think they were trying to recreate um, Happy from last year's Oscars. That's um, maybe you know, that too. was like the big show, and that got everybody that was, pumped up, and everybody that was loved big, it. Like, get up and was, dance! Oh, it's fun! Let's have a good time! I think yeah, because but everything's they... awesome was kind of like the equivalent of that in terms of the songs that got nominated. They were trying to recreate that kind of magic, and it sort of worked, right. but it wasn't as good as Pharrell Williams' right. Happy. Yeah, like mm-hmm. even at, even at that, like Happy, it felt like like Happy felt a little more organized than the Lego Movie. Because, like, the Lego movie is about, like, anything. Like, they throw in anything. And it feels... It feels like they're they're doing way too much. And that's my biggest issue. Like, it could have been... Like, it's good, but it probably could have been handled better. If I were them, I would have taken, like, the, the thing song. with... What? The thing with Will Arnett as Batman, I would have taken that a step further and just, like, had the cast start performing. And if all Chris Pratt and friggin' um, What's-Her-Face, Elizabeth Banks... Like all of them come together and like start dancing together. That might have been fun if we were really gonna do a thing like that. You know, that that would have yeah. at least made sense. It would have made more sense than just bringing in the high high puffy Yumi or whatever. I don't know. I don't know. It's just a bit of a mess, honestly. High <laughs> puffy Yumi. I, I hadn't quite thought of that, but it is. It 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 does resonate. Yeah, it's true. It's true. I haven't heard of Hi Hi Puffy Ami Yumi in, in a while. <laughs> Any other uh, performances that stuck out like a sore thumb? Of glory. What else? Glory! 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 Glory's glory phenomenal. Glory! Yeah, everybody was glory. praising Glory performance. Glory! Everybody was like... Glory! Glory! Glory was great. Glory! Glory we was a shiny beacon in like a, a swamp of Selma getting overlooked. If that made sense at all. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. I haven't seen the movie, but I, uh, on behalf of on behalf of John Legend and his just his performance alone, I can see why that won. It, it was a mm-hmm. it was a decent song. Uh, the performance the performance was overpowering. The message, you know, it was very real. Mm-hmm. It, it, yeah, it's mm-hmm. very strong. At the Other message than that. movie and. Mm-hmm. Should mm-hmm. the director should have gotten nominated for best director? At least a nomination. She didn't have to win, but at least a nomination. Do you know how many female directors there are who get recognized by the Academy at all? Like Catherine Bigelow, uh, uh, Sofia Coppola. That's about oh, all. Wow, I know. and only one for Glory. Okay. Do you know now? Do you know how many women of color get recognized by the Academy for their directors? I'll tell ya. This many. Three? This many. 
zero, zero, not three, zero. Well, Jeez, you Matt. you want to know how to fix that? Maybe we should have more director directors who are women of color. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. 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 That would that would work. Well, like, that, if you, if, if then then there might forward, be a a chance there. If one comes forward and makes a movie that's legitimately really good and really powerful, and the Oscars mm. just ignore it, what are you supposed to fucking do? Like, I definitely do believe. I definitely do. Actually, I do recall, like, if at the most, I can think of one woman of color who did get nominated, but, like, technically, I don't know if it counts. Like, it is for Best Animated Feature because, um, a di- because the director of Kung Fu Panda 2 was an Asian woman, so would that was count? Nominated, was she nominated for Best Director? No. So it doesn't count. Because Selma was at least nominated for Best Film. They gave it that much of a nod. But, like, the best David o- Oyelowo, he was phenomenal as Martin Luther King. Like, he brought Martin Luther King to life. He completely, perfectly portrayed that character. Not a single mention. Not one nod. I mean, I understand Eddie Redmayne winning, and Lord knows he deserved it, because he was great as Stephen Hawking. But friggin' God, Steve Carell was not that great in Fox Cat. He was just Honestly. playing Steve Carell with slightly more toned-down mannerisms. That was so not better than David Oyelowo. Yeah, I'll, I'll be honest. Maybe... Um, I was actually I was actually very shocked when I heard that Eddie Redmayne won for the theor- for the Theory of Everything. I haven't just saying I have not seen uh, the Theory of Everything. I'm sure he he's fantastic, but like I I felt kind of shocked where like just a couple of years ago we were making fun of this guy for being a Muppet in the Misérable, and now he's like an an, an Academy Award winning actor. Like, yeah, I now he's going to be cast Eddie in Redmayne. everything now. I always thought that Eddie Redmayne had acting chops. I mean, his singing was a little awkward in Les Mis, but that's true of everybody in Les Mis, because Les Mis, the sound was fucking terrible. All sorts of bad decisions there. But he was he acted well, and he... Oh my god, I want to see Jupiter Ascending so bad. I want to see it so bad, you guys. It's like the new Fifth Element Battlefield Earth thing. I want to see it so bad. <laughs> So yeah, you're let's... the first person that met that said that. Oh my That's... god, it looks so terrible and so amazing. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, not like. So um, let's get into the meat and the potatoes of the last bit of it is uh the, the winners. Ah, and the meat and the potatoes. All that. <laughs> the winners who won and our reactions to that. Uh, right. every time well... American Sniper doesn't win an Oscar, an angel gets its wings. I think that, that, that's not uh, my. That was on Twitter, but it was pretty great, so I kept it. Technically, it did win one. I what think it, it won. Yeah, it won one for best sound. I. Uh, by the way, Mike, for you for this episode, I still kept my predictions lit. Well, I noticed. I noticed. I was like, "That's the crap from the video." I, I know, was making like, all of my predictions live based on not the performances because uh, I, I didn't see any I of was, them. Yeah, it was. It was uh, sound editing. the one best sound editing. Sound editing. I have it uh I have it up too, so As you can only, tell but... Oh, go on. The only win that really surprised me was um what's her face for boyhood. Uh best uh... Uh, is it, I think it's one of the actors yeah, Patricia Arquette. Yeah, she she surprised me. Like I didn't think that she was all that spectacular. I thought that there were several supporting actresses who did a better job. But okay, mm-hmm. I guess we gotta give Boyhood credit somehow because it did a movie for twelve years. Yeah. But did you notice all the um, the, the comic book superhero films that got nominated and didn't win anything? Only for effects. Yeah, like stuff. Guardian of the Galaxy. Like vi- the, yeah, visual effects like Captain America: The Winter Soldier, Guardians of the Galaxy, uh, X Men: Days of Future Past. I mean, in a stellar one for visual best visual effects, and, and I'm thinking, what? That's I really don't really me. get it. Yeah, I was expecting, like, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes to win, honestly. A, a lot of people were saying that, too, I noticed. I was like... I kind of expected Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, because I, I guess we're used to that kind of effects, because Gollum did it. So now, if, if there's a bunch yeah. of Gollum monkeys running around, well... <laughs> we already gave a buzz for that. Did Gollum anyone else notice... Monster. Did anyone else notice that... Uh, that uh, speaking of superheroes, we had... 
we had two Incredible Hulk actors uh, nominated for the same yes. category. Yeah. Ed yes. Norton yes, I the... noticed that Ed Norton and Mark Ruffalo. Yeah, I just I noticed I was like the battling of the Hulk. <laughs> I did not notice that. <laughs> Holy crap. I noticed that. I was like, oh. Oh, who was it that won for supporting actor again? Uh, J.K. Simmons. Uh, J. Jonah Jameson won. Oh, yeah, that was, the first, that was the first award. <laughs> that was the first award they gave or out. Yeah, or for you Cora right fans, away. Tenzin won an Oscar. <laughs> Tenzin? Yep. It's, it's a Cora thing. Don't don't worry, James. Oh, oh, okay. Legend, Legend of Cora. Legend of Cora. Uh... Um, I guess I can go into the animation category now. I was gonna say, I was gonna say, Matt, why don't you get into the animation portion of the winners? Now I will, the, yes, uh... and I will say that this year I've actually done effort and I've seen every single animated feature and animated short film. I actually now, did why effort. Why would you do that, Matt? Why would you put in more effort than the voters did? Ooh, because, because I care about <laughs> animation. That's why. He's, he's the animation nerd. Why not? <laughs> and um, I gotta say, I am surprised that... I actually was really surprised that Feast ended up winning. Because I was expecting the Dam Keeper to be the winner. Because out of all the uh, animated shorts, not only was it the longest, but it was also the most emotionally driven. It was pretty, it was pretty much a short that was driven by emotions. And it was really powerful. Like, it had a cute little story with... Um, cute little anthropomorphic a animals but it really was a strong and um a strong and very emotional film i w well i will admit that um feast like would have been my second pick but i felt kind of weird that like honestly i really liked feast but i didn't think it was as good as either paper man or get a horse and i find it kind of weird that get a horse didn't win the didn't win for best animated feet for best animated short yet feast did I find that weird. And now let's go into the uh, potatoes <laughs> of this thing. Yes. Holy crap. I did talk not about it, Matt. This. How the talk about it. did Big Hero 6 ended up winning? Now, oh, I'm not surprised. I'll tell because... you how, because it was the Disney movie. Now, here's the thing. I felt I shocked. That's the only reason. Like, they didn't okay. watch it. It's just animation. Let's just vote for the Disney movie. And here's the thing. I was pretty much shocked that Big... I'm not saying that Big Hero 6 was bad. It's just, uh, like, it's not that... I, I, like, I'm not saying that Big Hero 6 didn't deserve it. I just felt like How to Train Your Dragon 2 deserved it more. Not only because it was a much better... It was an amazing film and an amazing sequel, uh, but also the fact how DreamWorks is right now. Because we know, like... We know the factor that DreamWorks really is like crumbling down as an animation studio. They they lost like in January they lost 500 employees, and uh, one of their divisions, PDI, just shut down. This Oscar would have really helped them, you know. It would have helped them like gain a bit of a reputation, but no, like it had to go to Big Hero Six. Now, if I could be very honest, um, Big Hero Six is kind of a tie for my second pick along with the tale of Princess Kaguya. Um, but I, I will say, like, if I had to do any changes, I would probably change the box trolls with either the Book of Life or the Lego movie. But other than that, like, I really am happy. Like, I am happy in terms of the nominations. Like, they, I felt like, yeah, they do deserve, like, to be nominated. But I will say, as an additional commentary for Kaguya, it really is an interesting movie. Not the best of the Studio Ghibli films, but really one of the most unique, one of the most artistically interesting uh, films, and definitely the most like it really, it, it really hits hard a lot on the Japanese uh, aspect. Like this is like the most Japanese movie I've ever seen. And Song of the <laughs> Sea, I will admit, it's a really good film, but I am kind of disappointed at it because. Um, well, I, I'm not saying it's bad. It's a really good film, but it's just that I really, really loved their previous film, The Secret of Kells, and I had really high hopes seeing it, but, like, I noticed a few flaws. Like, like I didn't really find the characters to be really likable that much. Some of, like, some of them are kind, like, some of them are kind of dicks, but, like, and that, that really does hinder the movie a bit, but other than that, like... Like it's still it's still good and it, it like I I would say yeah it still deserved that um, Oscar nomination so 
I'm happy with the list of nominees for Best Animated Feature, but I am completely shocked that Big Hero 6 won over Dragon 2. Uh, okay, look, here's the thing. Mm. Big, Big Hero 6 was okay. How to Train Your Dragon 2, I haven't seen. It looks fun. Box Trolls was a phenomenal disappointment. I know nothing about the two foreign movies, which is okay, because neither do the voters. So... What are the two high-grossing foreign films? Yoink, yoink. That's all it is. And no, I'm not surprised, because it's the Disney movie, and they don't care about the animated features. They just care about what's popular, and what's popular is the Disney movie. Honestly, like, I don't think anything that, that I've seen really deserved to get nominated for an Oscar. I think what it is is mainstream animated movies are not given as much free reign as, like, the animated movies that are not mainstream, and they are the only things that the Academy focuses on because high-grossing and because we don't actually care about animation because it's not like it's art. There are lower standards for the art of animation made in films in the eyes of Hollywood than there are for any other genre. The stories and the effects, nothing, there was nothing in any of those movies that, like, changed the world of film as we know it. Nothing was groundbreaking. It was just, like, Big Hero 6 was just, like, this cute little fun story. Box Trolls was, like, this story. This, this uh, little story. This, well, like, bear in mind, like, the Box Trolls is in there because, um, if you think about it, every stop-motion film gets nominated for Best Animated Feature, and I really do mean every single one. The thing is... Animated kids' movies and animated movies are treated like such crap by Hollywood that a movie that in live action would be seen as okay and pretty good can be seen as phenomenal by people if it's animated because that is the standard that we have been set to in the world of mainstream animation and the voters don't care because it's just animation. It's not like it's art. You know, you know also, if I may add one more thing, you want to know another reason why Big Hero 6 won? Because it was it was released later than any others. It was released in November, and it was still in theaters during the like during the time like the people would have to go vote. So that could play a big part of it. That, there's that too. I was like, well, I just saw Big Hero Six yesterday, so I guess I'll vote for that. <laughs> well, we're talking about about um, uh, foreign animated films just sort of being cherry picked to throw to throw in there. Why, what do you guys think about Hayao Miyazaki and his honorary Oscar? Oh, well, the Governor well Awards, that, that is, yeah, that is deserved, of course. Because, well of, because of his recent announcement of his, reti because of his uh, retirement from animated features, it definitely is something that he definitely did deserve. Like, it, so, like I think that's one of the, I think that's one of the recent attempts that the Oscars recognize animation, because Hayao Miyazaki, like, Hayao Miyazaki actually has the only Oscar that's recognized, um, like, for a foreign animated feature. Spirited Away, among all of them, is the only is the only foreign animated feature that actually won. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, like, no, but like, e like in our lifetime, career, maybe. Like, yeah, maybe. Like, it's definitely like. No, like, like he definitely like... did deserve it. Yeah, I think no, he did. Like he I just did. wanted to bring a point. I just wanted to bring a point out and mention that since, you know, we're we're on the subject of animation. But I think the Governor Awards are 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 a completely different thing because they do hand out uh, to animation stuff frequently. They also, I think, just recently they also gave one to Jeffrey Katzenberg, of uh, uh, for a human humanitarian awards as well, and I think just recently for like for technology. In turn, like for the technological awards, they gave one to uh, DreamWorks because they developed this new software. Mm hmm. Well, another segment of the Oscars they did, they did mentioned uh, previous awards mm -hmm. they've done. But, like, th like, I wouldn't say they're cherry picking, like, the, uh, the foreign animated features because, like I said, like, the people who choose um, who's the. Uh, like yeah, the the people who choose um, who's going to be nominated, they're the like they're the actual professionals. They are the ones who know what what they're doing, so they know like 
which one which ones to go to and like it wouldn't be as fun if every single one is pretty much the mainstream some of these animated features do need to be recognized like at the oscars like like films like the secret of kells or waltz with bashir or the triplets of of belleville all phenomenal films they would be non-existent to to the to the general public if it not if it weren't for the oscars mary and max um well mary and max actually didn't get nominated. i have a but... facebook friend who was like really pissed that mary and max didn't even get nominated i'm just saying for for an animated well, films that aren't getting recognized it was 2009. They gave that attention to The Secret of Kells, which very well deserved either way. Would it have been such a crime to do both? To recognize both? Would that have been totally I just re- Apparently. Well, actually, yeah. No, I think that, like, yeah, it's true. Because, like, I was about to say, like, well, they did it this year, but then, like, I thought, it was like, well, it's Studio Ghibli, and they did that last year with, like, the wind rises and Ernest and Celestine. So, like, that is true. So it's like you know, it's it's like that rule. It's like, okay, we gotta have one stop. We gotta have at least one Disney film. We gotta have at least one stop stop motion film. And we gotta have at least one foreign film. All right, all right. And a DreamWorks film. Oh yeah, and a dream. Oh yeah. And a, a and a DreamWorks film, yeah, 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 that's true. For, and a DreamWorks for, film, we gotta get your nut in there somehow. First winner of Best Animated Picture was a DreamWorks film. So yeah, and they, that's they, the they only one. Some. And that that's the yeah. only one when you think about it. Yeah. Yeah, I remember Even that. Even though there are yeah. so many better DreamWorks films than Shrek. Oh, well, thank whatever. you, Jada, thank you. <laughs> Shrek too. I'm not saying I hated Shrek, but there were... There are numerous better DreamWorks films than Shrek. Before and after Shrek. So. Yeah. Yeah, true. <sighs> but then again, so... like Shrek's treatment to nowadays, um, I wouldn't say, well, it's, it, it is praise, but not in the way it probably should. <laughs> Shrek is life. Yeah. I, you know, honestly, so, I'm surprised DreamWorks is not cashing that is not trying to cash in on that. Like DreamWorks doesn't have any official Shrek is Love, Shrek is Life T-shirts. Yeah. Yes, Matt. I, yeah, yeah it's, I'm not. I don't know anything about that. Oh, it's oh James. <laughs> oh James. Internet. Oh James. It's, it's an internet meme. Oh James. Oh, James. James. You you are, you are missing out. I'm trying to actually explain the thing, you guys. It's just an internet meme where we like you can't put Shrek's ju- face on things. You can't just say it. that. You cannot you can't just say that. It's you have to see. Really, it all it is. Eyes. You can't. You have to see the special. video. You have to you see have the to. video. Everybody's doing reactions on it on YouTube. You know. Uh, I'm I'm looking at a an an <laughs> image on Google Images right now. No, you have to see the video, James. You have to yes. see the video. You have to see the video. Hold you on, let me send you the video, James. You don't have I to spread, see the video. I spread my ass cheeks for Shrek. He penetrates my butthole. <laughs> <laughs> that's canon. Yeah, that, that's canon. That, that's canon. Save search Google. Save search Google. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So... Anyways, besides the point, um, what should the Oscars approve on? What should they do to make it a better award show? Actually put effort into the writing of the comedic bits and the hosts. And, um, um, I actually heard uh, there is a recent change that they are doing is that, um, and this is, uh, this is confirmed, I think it's confirmed, is that now they are going back to having only five at, um, five nominees for best picture to make it feel like now that the nomination feels actually more meaningful instead of just putting in oh look up is nominated oh look at Toy Story 3 is nominated for best picture does that mean something no oh okay it seems like they're mostly trying to stick to five they did five this year didn't they no Red they did Red nine Selma, no, I think they did eight Birdman Fear of Everything 
Oh, yeah. um... Yeah, American Sniper, yeah. Birdman, Boyhood, Grand Budapest Hotel, The Imitation Game, Selma, The Theory of Everything, and Whiplash. Okay, okay, so... I forgot about two of those. And I accidentally gave Foxcatcher too much credit. <laughs> My I, think, I think the only one that was nominated was just Steve Corral or something. Uh, Channing Tatum, Tatum was nominated, I think. My, no, not my, even. Su my suggestion. Okay, actually, I, I should get this out of the way first. My demand uh, for the Oscars in the future, in the future, in in terms of their presentations, did anyone was anyone else bothered by the lack of of movie montages this time around? No, honestly, I'm not. I, I kind of was. There was a lack um, of a lot of things. Movie uh, montages, they're, they're, they're not the most effortful form of entertainment, you know? I, 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 I used to love those. I used to, I used to find those very creative, even if it's sometimes predictable. But yeah. uh, another thing I'm going to mention is probably... Uh, is probably to the a suggestion to Oscar voters uh, while we're while we're on uh, topic of uh, while we're on topic of um, actually telling the voters to go see the movies. Stop being so predictable. Uh, I didn't see. I didn't see these. Uh, I didn't see a lot of the movies that were that were nominated or their performances either. Uh, either. So I have no idea why they were nominated, and I, I just go. I just go into the. I just go into there knowing that there's there's certain rules about about performances and whatnot when they're nominated. Uh, there was a, a cracked article. Uh, written several years ago saying uh, uh, acting tricks that always seem to fool the critics and uh, they talked about stuff like uh, when uh, when an actress puts on a puts on a role that that uh, a, a typically pretty actress put uh, takes on a role that makes her not so pretty sometimes they they nominate that, and that wins. If an actor plays somebody who's gay, uh, sometimes they nominate, and actually that wins every time. Or, or uh, transsexual. Or transsexual. It, take, it takes so much effort to pretend to be a girl, you guys. I mean, the amount of dignity that you have to lose to pretend to want to be a woman. God. And I'm not then... Going. And then the biggest, the biggest predictability of all, thanks to Robert Do Robert Downey Jr. for famously pointing this out in uh, *Tropic Thunder*. Um, whether or not you go fully retarded. Oh uh, yeah. The because I was I was trying to guess. I was trying to guess. Um, based on these parameters, who was going to win? And I was like, okay. This this guy right here is playing. Yeah, I just I just found out this uh, imitation gay uh, game guy was 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 gay, so he's probably gonna win. Oh wait, that Steve, that guy's playing Stephen Hawking. Oh damn it, I got trumped. Yeah, because the one thing that beats out playing a, a gay or transsexual person is playing a mentally disabled or physically disabled person. That will always get you attention from the critics. Yep. Always. I mean, it's it takes effort to put to put on those performances. Don't get me wrong; it's just mm -hmm. it it starts to become a, a trend after a while. We had, we had a double whammy this year. We had best actor was a physically disabled character or person, and best actress was a mentally disabled character. So, mm -hmm. Juliette mm -hmm. Hill for still Alice had Alzheimer's. So uh, there you go, double whammy. Uh, just goes to ah, show. Okay. All right. A couple of years ago, I remember Christopher Plummer was uh, was uh, playing a 
a, a father figure in a movie where uh, that uh, that in the movie he he uh, his character came out to his son played by uh, what um, uh, I can't believe I'm forgetting his name right now Ewan McGregor and I don't think anyone went to go see the movie but uh, Chris uh, Plummer Plummer's character comes out to his son admits that he's gay in the film and I don't think anyone went to go see the movie as far as I know but he still got the he still got the Academy Award nomination and won it for that role. It also helps when you're a veteran actor. If you're a veteran mm. actor who's like playing that kind of character, because Lord knows there are a lot of indie movies that are actually about the struggle of the LGBT community that don't get attention because they're not mainstream enough and don't have well-known enough actors. Very few actors get their start playing gay characters or mentally disabled characters, unless they're in a movie with another celebrity. Mm-hmm. Or if they're in a comedy. Uh, yeah. I don't know about that. Hey. I don't know about that, Matt. Yeah. So, lastly, I would like to ask, who should host the Oscars next year? Um, my vote is it really doesn't matter, it's going to suck anyway. Um, Actually, can I add one more thing? One more thing to improve the Oscars. Yep. yep. Go ahead. You guys have a time limit. Keep it to the time limit. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah, because it went a it went half overboard. hour longer. I think it went like either yeah, an hour that, or like forty-five minutes I, longer than it should. I was taping it, and all of a sudden it stopped. I was like, wait a minute. There's actually thirty minutes. What the fuck? No, yeah, I think it's like it, it extended forty-five minutes. It's like. I think they just filled it up with so many unnecessary things, like unnecessary yes. numbers and stuff like that, and like useless jokes. And it's like, yeah, come on, what? stop it with the stick fillers, to, man. St- stick with your time limit. You got like three hours Seriously. and a half or so. Just stick to it. Also, um, also, stop being so damn racist. That might get you pretty far. Might open up some doors. The Oscars are so racist, you guys. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going in there. Oh, you're so fucking nice. kidding me. Oh. Oh, my goodness. Just, just saying. Uh, anyways, um, I've noticed that on Twitter there was like a campaign that the people wanted Dwayne The Rock Johnson to host next year. Which was weird. I was like... Yeah, because he, he, he presented the best animated feature so well. I don't know. I mean, like, like, there's a guy who's connected to our young audience demographic. <laughs> Kids love the tooth fairy. Oh. <laughs> uh, oh I'm gonna suggest I... uh, Nathan Lane. Nathan Lane. Oh, that's a good one. I feel like that would be a little Billy Crystal esque. Yeah, it would like, be. He's but... I don't care. He's Nathan Lane. Yeah, but he's Billy like Crystal. Yeah, Billy Crystal's been hosting the darn thing for a long time. Yeah, yeah but he's a legendary comedian. Yeah, He'll but we never great. gave we never gave Nathan Lane a shot. It's... We can't yeah. just presume that oh, he's gonna be like Billy Crystal. Come on, give him a shot. He's a really entertaining guy. He's he's kind of outdated right now. No, he's, he's not. not liar. He is. No, he's he, not. What was the last relevant thing he did? Lion King one and a half? Oh. One. Don't believe me, just watch. I just remembered my other suggestion. Open the door, get on the floor. Everybody wants to stand the floor. Open the door, get on the floor. Okay. Wait a minute. Okay. Yes, that okay, anyway. is the sound. Yeah. No, but uh, closing thoughts. I actually, wrap I actually ups. have, I actually have a good suggestion. Why don't we bring someone back like John Stewart or Stephen Colbert? I remember when John Stewart did it. He was, he was actually John pretty Stewart good. Did it twice. John Stewart did it twice. Stephen Colbert has not hosted it yet, so. So why not bring bring John Stewart or have Stephen Colbert? 
John Stewart was great. Yeah, Colbert. You, you could bring him I'm back sure for the third Bell, time. Yeah, Colbert would be good. Yeah, Steve Colbert could could work. I mean, yeah. how about I mean, uh, Eddie Murphy after after a couple of cups of coffee? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Again, he needs Disney it. He needs, needs it. First, I mean, let Disney I, I, find I, I, his career back from the Disney ride, and then he can do it. Didn't you hear Neil Patrick Harris, James? He doesn't need this. He is <laughs> the Oscars. He's too good for him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I heard him, I heard you. I don't care. Man who did... Yeah. <laughs> you would never yeah, you hear sex. that, James? You hear that, James? Nordic don't need no Oscars. He would never stoop to such lowbrow, attention-seeking stunts. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> I found the perfect <laughs> Oscar host. Let me see. Whoa, what? Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> see, I can click on that. But I don't think it works. Like, oh, good God. You could, you could get Mike Myers the host. Yeah, we could. You, guys. you could get Mike Myers the host. You could get, get Mike Myers the, the Scottish accent. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Shrek Oscar party. I, I, do, I don't have closing thoughts about the Oscars. I pretty much said, and I don't, now I don't care. Um, uh, yep, that's pretty much all wrapped up here. Let me, uh... Just say that. I'll just. I, I can have one wrap up. Animation fans, go watch the Annie Awards because it's definitely more legit than the Oscars. Twenty Two Jump Street was less funny than the first movie. There, that's my closing thought. Not not funny, but less funny. That's my. Possums closing. have pouches like kangaroos. Would you like a goldfish cracker? Well then screw you uh, screw you guys, I'm eating it either way. So um I just wanna remind you guys that uh next time we're gonna go into actors bio. I'm not doing a guest game no more because I revealed the schedule to all these yeah. guys. And they might they might not remember it, but I'll remind them anyways. So <clears throat> so next time, two weeks from now, on the 22nd, we'll be talking about Keanu Reeves. Whoa. Whoa, indeed. Whoa. Talk about... Uh, like, I just saw kinda... Point Break this weekend. Oh, dude, that's text of the film I wanted to screen, actually. Oh. I don't think I've seen much Keanu Reeves movies, actually, but... It's kind of interesting to talk about uh, his uh, acting and... What films he's done, I mean, you can talk about The Matrix, talk about, yeah, acting, <laughs> mind you. He can talk about Matrix, talk about Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, you could talk about uh, Point Break, you talk about John Wick. whatever. John Wick, yeah, a great film last year, great film, John Wick's a great one. I kind of want to talk about John um, Wick for reasons that I'll probably state later. Actually, talk coincidentally... Talk about Men of Tai Chi, maybe? Actually, coincidentally, oh, I'm, uh, soon I'll be doing a review of A Scanner Darkly, so... Oh yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I can actually, so, I can actually make my review much, er, much earlier, save it for later, and then I'll talk about it with you guys here. Hey, Doggy. Exactly. Hey, Doggy. Exactly. And then, and then, uh, four weeks from now, it would be our fiftieth ever, fiftieth. 50th anniversary. This is Cinema Royale 50th anniversary <laughs> special. 50th episode of the podcast. Uh, Morgan's going to be on that episode. Ooh. He's coming back. And we're going to talk about Eddie Murphy films that episode. Oh, what a coincidence. So why not celebrate... Fi- what, what a why great not celebration ta- of 50 years. Eddie Murphy. Eddie sure. Murphy. I mean, 50... Oh, yeah, 50 years. 50... <laughs> 50 oh years of God, remembering someone that? who actually was kind of good at one point, <laughs> sometime, somewhere. Oh. Anyways, anyways, that's the podcast. Uh, this has been Cinema Royale. Um, I hope you enjoyed this episode. This is actually a lot better than 
last year's, I believe. I kind of had his organized a little bit better than last time, but hey, it check out. too bad, check out 20... Mike. It wasn't too bad. I, I don't know. I felt awkward during that. It was just the two of us. I don't know. Hey, it wasn't like I'm bad. Uh, he's good. I mean, he was really good. I mean, that was 24 episodes ago. Yeah, yeah mind you, this is episode 48, so 24 times 2 is 48. International Women's Day, everyone. Celebrate by being a more organized feminist than Patricia Arquette. Thank you. Yeah, th- actually, yes. That, that's a good statement. Yeah! <laughs> yeah! I made a good statement for once, parent. Meryl Streep, like, yeah! You go, girl! Oh, man. Actually, funny enough, um, I remember seeing... Um, I think, James, I remember seeing your picture. It was pretty much Patricia, like a comparison of Patricia Arquette's salary with her brother's. Yes, and everybody commented on that. Yes, like, yes, Patricia, we need equality. Pay your brother more. (laughs) Well, it... It was just a closer, you guys. Yeah. It was just a closer. It's just a closer. Until next time, we'll see you at the cinema. The Royal Cinema. Mm-hmm. Everybody wants dead. Good night. See you later, dudes.